Ah, there we go. And let me just switch over. All right. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I'm Kaylin McDonald, the social media manager for Sphere Being Alliance, as well as co-host of the new Sphere Being Alliance YouTube channel show, Cosmic Table Talk. So thank you guys. I'm so excited for this interview today. Today we have David Lone Bear Sunna Pass with us. Um, David is um, was gracious to join us um, all the way from Maine. And we were just discussing, I'm in Arizona, so I think it's about 60 degrees here right now. And in Maine, it's about 30. So everybody's having a beautiful day across the country, which is really great. A nice break from all the cold storms that have been blowing across. Um, so David, hi, how are you today? Um, I'm good today. Now, how are you today? It's, uh, it's a beautiful 30 degrees out here. It's a heat wave in Maine, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you're going to enjoy it while it lasts, because I assume it won't yeah. last too long. <laughs> well, we have some snow coming next couple of days, so. Right. All right. Well, David, I wanted to read a quick excerpt from your um, from your website, starteachings.org, just to kind of give a quick introduction to the audience of your work. Um, and then I'm going to let you give a much better introduction of yourself and just kind of explain what you do and what your mission is. Okay. So, all right. So from starteachings.org, the star teachings begin with kindness, compassion, and happiness. There are more beyond these first three teachings, and they are revealed as the community shows readiness for them. These are ancient teachings shared with us by Mikama elder, storyteller, and star teachings archivist, David Lone Bear Sonifast. So that's my quick little introduction, and David, I'm going to let you take it away. So thank you very much. Uh, thank you for having me on here today. Um, I'm always um, uh, gracious for people to find out what the star teachings are. I'm uh, Mikama. Uh, that means I'm uh, a Native American from the Northeast. Uh, been uh, teaching the Copper Scrolls and the uh, ancient teachings for the last uh, 40 years. And um, I, I was born and raised in Maine, uh, lived here most of my life. I traveled around the world a couple of times uh, before now. Uh, been uh, traveling the last 10 years, uh, sharing the teachings uh, of the star teachings. Uh, uh, that uh, people think they know what the star teachings are, but the, the, uh, what I'm explaining to star teachings is, is, a, is a different explanation. I'll get into that a little bit more. And I'm a scientist. I, I work with um, high atmosphere magnetic disturbances. I've been uh, working with that, that science the last 40 some odd years. I've been uh, working here in Maine and traveling uh, through around the world now, uh, uh, talking about the um, the star teachings and the science, uh, meeting a lot of different people like yourself and trying to explain on what the teachings are. The teachings are the uh, huge range of uh, teachings from kindness, compassion, happiness. That's just the first teachings. Uh, we have many teachings out there uh, and uh, some of them explained in what you think uh, they are and a lot of them ex explain more of the scientists, science of uh, kindness and compassion and happiness. A lot of people don't think there's a science behind kindness. There is. Um, uh, if we breathe air, we walk, we do other things, there's science, the science behind it. Uh, through the, the last uh, several years, uh, people have been interested on the teachings. You know, there's a lot of teachings out there that, uh, that you hear about. And, and some people haven't heard about the star teachings. Uh, the reason why they haven't, because they have not been revealed to the world uh, since I... Uh, 19, uh, uh, sorry, 2012. That's when I start coming over and, and bringing the teachings. Why now? Uh, it's because that we are looking uh, for explanation uh, of where we came from or where we come from and what's going on in the world now. How does that um, match what's, what's going on in our life? I, I find that uh, any place I speak, there's usually uh, different topics that we speak about from aliens to, you know, abductions to all the different things that you hear about. Um, I'm not saying they're not true, but a lot of them is that we need to know explanations, uh, why things happen. And I think that the Star Teachings uh, gives a good um, a summary in what really is going on. I, I tell people that, um, that uh, uh, to be open-minded is possible. 
um, because uh, that's really hard to do in this day and age. You would say when you're being open-minded, because this is, some people say, I am open-minded. Then I start talking and, and they usually walk out or something like that. So being open-minded is being relaxed and open-minded so, <laughs> and listening. So. But um, I've been doing this for a while. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm also um, uh, a father and, and, uh, and husband. I've been doing this uh, the last several years, uh, going around the United States, talking to different uh, venues. Um, I've been finding a lot of people uh, are interested in what we are doing and find out that, um, that you know, there is an explanation of uh, where we came from. Uh, some of it, it may, you might take a grain of salt to try to believe it. I mean, but there's a lot of things out there that you can believe in and take a grain of salt. So um, am I any different? Not really. It's just uh, my understanding is more through science than it is um, other things. That um, if there is our, our lights in the sky, uh, I'm not saying they're uh, visitors from the planet, there's an exp explanation why there's lights in the sky. Um, they may not be what you want to hear, but as a scientist that I, I do examine that, I examine all the things out there that um, we are uh, looking at now from aliens to UFOs, to phenomena, uh, to prophecy, to all the other teachings and trying to make some sense of it. So, and, and that's what we really need because, you know, since I've been doing this, uh, we, we, we had the, <laughs> start an organization to get all the uh, people's um, questions answered. There's a lot of uh, people are sending questions in, and we can't answer all of them. We're trying, uh, but we can't answer all of them. But that's kind of what I'm doing here today, Q. So. Fantastic. Thank you so much, David. So before we get into the introduction on the star teachings, as well as the Copper Scrolls, can you, um, you have a pretty, um, uh, what's it's it's a pretty amazing story as far as your personal your childhood and your journey and how you were taught the star teachings and how you became an archivist and a translator of the copper scrolls <clears throat> excuse me can you just give the audience a little bit of your background as far as um, kind of the prophecy behind your birth and then how what your childhood was like we'll say um, I can probably say some of it um, I, I don't like usually talking about myself very much um, but as uh, I, I tell people, it's like going to school for 32 years, uh, you know, and just that every day going to school and edu being educated. Uh, people don't realize that, um, that when we go to school that we are taught uh, education. If we're taught reading, math and stuff like that, some of us excel at it, but uh, only th through those 12 to uh, 18 years that we go to school. Uh, when I was growing up, uh, that part of my, the, uh, Spiritual education, of course, is you know the ceremonies where you, who you are and who the Mi'kmaq are. That's part of it, but uh, other parts of it is learning about the world, really learning about the world itself, and that has a lot to do with history, mathematics, um, um, geometry, physics, all the different uh, sciences out there that, that I've been educated with. I know that's kind of hard to believe, but um, not for me. I've been in school for a long, and I'm still in school. I'm still learning. Uh, you never get to the point that uh, you know everything. Um, and that's what I've been doing for the last um, 40 years is um, uh, taking that education in and putting it to work, uh, putting it into application, things like that. As my, my birth prophesies, um, that's, um, that's uh, my birth was prophesied 300 years before I was born. That's a longer story. I won't get into that, but, um, but um, it's um, sometimes it's really hard to tell the non-natives because a lot of the fluffy stuff of being native, you know, it's really not true, but being native, growing up in, in, uh, in the native community and coming out of the native community, going into the non-native community, it was harder because um, I, we had to come here into the non-native uh, community and uh, learn your education, uh, learn your ways and things like that. So um, the, the non-native Communities are not communities. They're, they're not like natives. We're close knit communities. Most uh, non-native communities are not close knit. And their minds made up, and we we're still Tonto and Geronimo and the feathers and all this stuff. You know, and, and I give an example. A little girl come home uh, the other day with uh, paper feathers, and um, and a, a song that was sung in kindergarten. And she doesn't go to a native school. And it's, it was very insulting to hear that. It's, our education is not caught up 
you know, they still think that we live in teepees and wigwams and, and all this stuff. Um, I live in a house. <laughs> that, that, yeah. That. yeah. Yes, you do. All right. Well, let's shift it over to um, to uh, the star teachings. So can you give an introduction, possibly just an introduction of maybe the history and where it came from and um, kind of what, you know, just a basis for our audience of what the star teachings are? Well, uh, the star teachings is uh, ancient teachings, but you got to remember what ancient is that we think ancient is in the past, but um, the future always rewrites itself. Uh, and part of our, our education, uh, uh, what is our documentation, who we are now? How can we document that? Uh, can we document that through our education, uh, through our literature, through our songs, through our stories? Um, yes and no, uh, you can do that. Uh, but we can only go so far back. And we can theorize about all the other things like Galantis, all the different uh, things in Samaria, you know, and we think these are truths. Um, a lot of them are stories told over and over and over and over again. And we take that as a truth eventually. Uh, remember that the history is written by the winners, not by the losers. So uh, if you're looking at your history and you're, you're trying to figure out what your history is, that's mostly the, the, the winning people uh, on the spirituality is from the winning people, uh, from all the different things is from the winners. Why is that? It's because um, our history is a, uh, laced with wars, uh, that, a lot of wars that's in our history, and the conquerors, and, and that's all mixed up eventually, all that history is all mixed up, and some of the, the true uh, teachings were lost many thousands of years ago. Uh, we talk about the Bible, we talk about the, the Quran, we talk about all these different other uh, literatures out there, the Dead Sea Scrolls, they give us partial truths of partial stories. So it's really hard to come up with that answer on uh, what the teachings are. You know, if you sit down right now and uh, you write down your teachings, uh, so uh, I, I ask people to do this when they hear me. So sit down and tell me what your teachings are. And people uh, usually will go to uh, what they learned on this thing or what they think is, you know, love, peace, things like that. Um, Great words, but we have not really done anything with those words. You know, we, we talk about peace. We have no peace. Uh, we talk about love. There is no love. We talk about all the different things out there that, you know, we, we think that we are in, in, um, into, but we're, we're not. So we don't have an accurate uh, description of our teachings. Even, even if you came up with 27 teachings, uh, come up with number one, number two, number three, and explain them. Uh, we can only come up with one or two most of us anyway, uh, I can come up with 27 through the star teachings. Uh, the 27, uh, the, the teachings are, I call them our reactive teachings. Uh, uh, they deal with uh, nature. They deal with um, how uh, we deal with the universe. Uh, we keep on thinking that uh, we're not following a pattern. We are following a pattern. Um, we are following a pattern right now. Um, we wake up, we sleep, uh, we eat, uh, we do different things. We do things in patterns. So does nature, so does the cosmos, but we don't really realize that we're doing it. Uh, we try to force it sometimes. Uh, sometimes we do ceremony, that's forcing part of, of nature is wanting something to happen. Uh, sometimes we pray, that's forcing nature too. And then prayer is like, um, you take the Our Father that is asking the Creator to come back and help us. And uh, we've been saying that thousands and millions of times. I'm not saying uh, Christianity is wrong. I'm not saying spirituality is wrong or the other, the other spiritual movements. We're partially right about the probably 1% of, of all our teachings, including the Copper Scrolls. The Copper Scrolls is a manual, a star teachings manual on how to uh, live in community, not how to live to, with oneself. If you know how to live in oneself, you know how to live in community. Um, that's kind of hard to do in this day and age because um, everybody wants the fixed answer. You know, I have a lot of people tell me the secret of the copper scrolls. Well, you're going to have to live them. Uh, and we, we do that. Uh, the, the first uh, teaching in, in, in the copper scrolls is kindness. Be kind to yourself, you know. Uh, be, be kind to your neighbor. Find out who your neighbor is, you know. You know the, how hard that's to do, to be kind to yourself? Some of us, that we bring so much baggage with us when we, we go to talk. We, we sell, we, we're selling bags for 
for for a sale, but it's like anything else. Is that being kind, compassionate, and happy? That's the first thing that we do. Guess what? That's the first thing uh, in nature that happens. Uh, we look at a deer being born, and we say, "Oh, that's love there." And we see the the the, the mom come down and lick the deer. And we, we we claim that as love. Yeah, that's one explanation for it. But if you explain it in nature, it's kindness. Uh, what you do that uh, when you're watching that a, a mountain lion comes out of the bush and start eating the little little one? What do you call that then? Oh, that's not right. But that is part of that's what we do. But we hide our our our, our ourselves our thing when we eat something and we eat a cow. We don't show the cow first. We show the beautiful hamburger with the lettuce and tomato, and we we don't see the the living life behind that. The same in, in, in the, the teachings of the, of the star teachings is that, that we have to look what that truth is really is, you know. Um, we're, we're not greater than anybody else, you know. We're not the big and bad of the universe. And we want to say that we are, but the Copper Scrolls that says that we're not. But in and, and the Copper Scrolls and the teachings, it says that we are not the only ones here. Uh, you can take that the way you you think you can take it. You can think is that yes, we are uh, um, intelligent uh, to a certain point, but uh, we are we are we intelligent enough to understand what compassion is? Maybe so, or what happiness is? Maybe so, but we keep on uh, thinking we we're the ones on this earth that rule the earth and uh, global warming, all that. We're not. You know, we're, we're not. We're not the only ones here. And in the teachings, um, the star teachings, it says that we are originally from the stars. Um, what does that mean? That means that we had to travel here somehow, some way, uh, and that history is, in, is embedded into our history. How is that, you know? Uh, is it through the Sumerian texts? Uh, is, is it through uh, the Hopi, the Mi'kmaq, uh, through the Apache, uh, through... The Vikings uh, to the English, it's uh, little pieces are there, but we, we, we're not intelligent enough to put all this together. Uh, we keep on thinking that um, there's aliens among us. Maybe so, maybe so, but what do they look like? Uh, are they green? Um, are they uh, reptilians? Are they, you know, but you know, there's partial truths here, uh, but it's like, what are you really looking for? Are we finding that truth on this machine that we're on now, you know, on Facebook or on YouTube or things like that? But boys, that sure gets around and we, we, we look for the truth, but we don't seek the truth. There's a, there's a, there's a difference looking and seeking. Uh, so I tell people that the, the people that are really seeking is the ones that's walking towards the teachers, walking towards the people that really to find out what's really what's going on. Uh, I know that Anywhere that I go uh, or I get mail uh, messages, they say, I have a message, I have a message. I'm this, I'm that, I'm this, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm receiving information and all this stuff. That's great. I think that's really great. But if, if you are seek, if you are receiving information, you should share that. Uh, not with me. I, not with me. Yes, you can do that. But uh, if you are uh, feel like you're seeking to do something, go and do it. I mean, you know, you're not going to do it through this machine. I'll tell you that. Uh, a lot of the teachings that I uh, go and teach, I, I actually go and walk and go teach somewhere, you know. Um, this machine is an informational thing, but I don't depend on this machine. Um, I'd be traveling in the next couple of days to another country uh, to teach. Um, and I tell people, come and find me. Uh, come, and, come and figure out what I'm saying, you know. Uh, I'm not saying that I'm right. I'm saying I'm right 1% of the time. So uh, come and seek that because there's a lot of information that I share that might not make sense to anybody else, but that person that's listening. Mm -hmm. uh, because we want change in this world. This, the star teaching says that, yes, we want change, but we, we got to be the change. Not our presidents, not our leaders, not, not our Congress. Us as a community has to have that change. And I think that we have that mixed up sometimes because, you know, some people say, I will pray for you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, prayer is really good. But... I think we should get off our ceremony and do something as communities. And we don't do that, you know. Uh, we had an ambition during the 60s, a million man march, and we did it. But we didn't do it long enough. You know, we should have stayed at least in that two months there. It would have been effective change. We all have jobs. We all depend on 
economy. Uh, we put in gas in, the, in our gas tank uh, to pay for this machine, to be on this machine. You know, we have our priorities all screwed up, you know. Um, we, we say, oh, we won't, we won't talk about peace. And, and um, I'm a mathematician, so I can figure out how much time we had. You realize last month we only had about a minute and a half of peace. What was all the other stuff that we we're doing? Um, some of it's eating, of course, some of it's uh, socializing, some football games and things like that, all the different things out there that we're uh, trying to find peace. If we change the word peace to football, we have it, you know? Mm-hmm. You know, we all paint up blue and go in a snowstorm and cheer for peace. Uh, we're cheering for people to throw a ball around. <laughs> and most of these people that I'm watching are millionaires. So like, oh, they got it right, I got it wrong, you know? <laughs> People say, we won. No, no, they won. You watched. <laughs> yeah, so and that's a hard way to look at it. I, know I get in trouble with the sport fans. <laughs> with the one. So, but that's true. You know, like we, we have a, a Black Friday here, you know. We go and look for the greatest sales out there. Too bad peace wasn't for sale. We'll have it. It'll be half off. Um, we stand in lines for all night and... Yeah those lies and rush to the door to find peace. I, I wish it was that easy. We don't really want peace. That, that's what I figured out. We say it a lot or even love, you know, uh, I, we use the love uh, uh, too long, too much. Uh, we don't really do anything about it. Some people says, I love you, brother. And I said, well, don't call me brother because I'm not your brother. And I don't love you because I don't know you. So, and, and it's, it's the easy thing to get away. With. So it's great. If, if you want to know me, come and meet me, shake my hand, have a cup of tea with me. That's it. You know, that's the same thing. But people don't want to do that. People just want to get away with the words. That's a lot there, my apologies. <laughs> do you, so I, I wanted to bring up a point that you made um, regarding, you know, there's 1%, like every facet has maybe 1% of the truth. So you said it could be the Mi'kmaq, the Vikings, the English, whoever, right? Like everyone's got maybe 1%. Um, and then also the true definitions of the words, kindness, happiness, love. Do you feel, um, either from your education or just your own personal opinion, do you feel that that is part of the um, oppression that's been engineered on the planet? Because if we don't ever, if we don't know the full truth, if we don't know our truth, and we don't understand the actual concepts or the the actions that are those three words. If if we don't understand that, do you believe that that was engineered here to keep us oppressed? No, um, we have great imaginations out there. Um, you, you think about the um, how we were brought up in this world. You know, uh, we're, uh, I was brought up in parts of Canada and the United States, and um, between what that. I would say a depression is uh, that puts it into our our spiritual self. Um, if we really want to be free, uh, to uh, we have to do something. Uh, we're depending on too many people to go and do it for us instead of us doing something else. You know, I find this a lot because uh, people say, "I want to hear you speak." You know, um, they live probably two hours from me, and they say, "Oh, I don't have time." But I find people. Uh, travel halfway around the world, some of them find peace to, to, to hear some of the words, but they're, they're coming halfway around the world. What is that value of, of, of that word? You know, and we're the same way. Uh, we put value in things. Um, um, I don't, we don't charge for people to come to hear the teachings. You know, you, you don't pay at the door. There's not like a 20, the door is not locked. The door is open for the teaching. In our mind, it's like, oh, there's no value there, you know. Um, there's no value, so there's, I'm not going to go. It's not going to cost me anything. But it's, it's like we're taught that. It's like now if I charge $500 a, a ticket, you know, I would have a sold-out stadium. But we would not listen. Mm-hmm. The thing. And we're not listening now. Um, all the places I've spoken, people hear it, but it's like, what are we going to do? Uh, what are we going to do after I'm done this program? Or, or, or what are you going to do tomorrow? You know, some people say, well, what am I going to do? I'm, I don't know. Let, let me see what I'm going to do. And they use this machine. And, you know, if aliens are taking over the world, they have already done it. They got your mind. But even knowing that truth, you know, if I can tell you all the technologies and all the wavelengths of that 
phone. And, you know, we try to, and this is the funny thing, as a scientist, trying to block up the e, EM out of the machine and they get it, sell you all these devices to block that signal. Do you realize if you block the signal of a cell phone, it won't work? People are not thinking about this, but say, I want to block out those bad uh, signals, but there's no bad signals there. You want to block the signal? Stop using it. <laughs> That's the thing. <laughs> Go to a wall phone. You know, what's, what's the that benefit? Put the phone back on the wall. Take it out of your hands in the bathroom, you know? You know, you, <laughs> you, the, you know that phone's got you when you... Uh, you walk around the, the house with this phone, you don't go too far from it. You go to bed and you put it beside your bed. You go to the bathroom, you sit there and you text while you're going to the bathroom. So aliens already got you. <laughs> <laughs> that is some, uh, that is that is real food for thought for sure. It is. It's, it is. it's the truth though. It's yeah. The, yeah. Uh, I remember a, a couple of weeks ago, a month ago, that I was driving, you know, and, and I'm thinking about this, I'm going to talk. And I was thinking about this, that, you know, people said, don't text while you drive and things like that. And I, I thought it was good, you know, so I'm, I'm in the, in the three way, yeah, I'm blocked in the three ways. The guy in front of me is texting. We have a law against texting now, so he's breaking the law. I look over the right, the guy is texting, the guy's on the phone, this guy's using the phone, the guy's phone inside. So around me, everybody's using the phone. So I called my wife, Jacqueline, on the phone and said, you wouldn't believe what I just seen. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so since we're talking about technology, I know that you have, um, I want to ask you about the consciousness based technology that, and, and also kind of how as a scientist, um, you know, it's my personal belief that science and spirituality that a, a gap has been engineered so that we don't understand that they're one and the same. And I think that there will be a lot of healing and understanding when we realize that science and spirituality really is, you know, two sides of the same coin. Um, so I want to show the audience really quick a piece of your technology, um, and then I'm going to let you explain it. Um, if I can figure out where my share button is. Here we go. Okay. So can you see this, David, on my screen? I can see it. Okay, perfect. Do you want to give the, the audience a background on what this technology is and then kind of go into an explanation of consciousness-based technology from your understanding? Sure. Um, this is the Biodome in North Carolina, Waynesville, North Carolina. Uh, this is part of a research project as a, as a, a, a magnetic vibrational inverted uh, magnetic wave. Um, this here is not a pseudoscience. This, is, this, this actually uh, makes a, um, a, a field around it. Uh, right now, that uh, this project has been on hold for the last couple of months, but uh, uh, the technology has been proven. Um, Part of, of this is the, the you're looking at the base of this, uh, that is a piece of granite. That granite goes down at least six feet into the ground. And um, the, what that does, it, um, it harnesses some of the earth field and right directly underneath of it, it's flowing water. Uh, I would say that we measured the waters on the about 26 feet. Um, when you have a moving water, uh, especially with uh, granite pebbles, granite things, uh, there's electrical field that's being made. Uh, the field is very, uh, it's hard to distinguish sometimes, but um, uh, we figured it was, uh, whoever made the biodome knew it was there. Uh, I'm tapping into that um, uh, electrical magnetic field into the ground itself. Uh, that is uh, harnessing some of the of the uh, capacitor, works as a capacitor. It stores the, um, the magnetic charge. In the middle of that um, granite is a, it's hollow uh, all the way to the core. Uh, so that separates it from negative and positive uh, through the granite. That, that harnesses it through a uh, core in the middle of that core. Uh, it, it takes that core and makes it into a, an actual electrical field. Uh, there's three rods uh, that's coming up through. Those three rods is negative, positive, and ground. Uh, they come up and power the crystal itself. That crystal is a quartz crystal, and it acts as a piezoelectric effect, and, and it, it compresses and decompresses and compresses a thousand times a second when, it, when a charge is added to it. 
you might no note this technology in your cell phones, uh, your, your uh, speakers and your um, microphone is piezoelectric. It's uh, made from a small crystal that turns a compression into electricity. This is kind of what it's doing here. Uh, that that um, quartz crystal vibrates at least 300,000 times a second, and it puts out an inverted, uh, inverted magnetic wave. And that magnetic wave fills the um, biodome uh, with that wave. There's a crystal above it, a crystal sphere. That crystal sphere is connected to a stainless steel wire that runs uh, 20 feet straight up into the biodome. That is the um, part of the uh, negative charge of that. That builds an electrical charge that uh, puts out, uh, uh, if, if you ground it, it puts out 160 volts uh, every two seconds. Um, that's grounded out through a grounding rod outside to the ground. So this itself makes inverted um, magnetic field inside the biodome. Uh, that field um, incorporates the, the same resonance as the human body, uh, human body's field. Uh, that's, uh, it depends how you tune it. Um, eventually this will have a control panel so you can pretty well control uh, the way you want the field. That field right now is measured uh, at least 10 miles out. We can measure that it's doing something 10 miles away. Uh, we'll make wow. it, so that field right now uh, goes probably about 10 miles up, 10 miles in the ground, 10 miles around it. Uh, so, and when you are in that mix, um, it's like uh, being, uh, I don't know if you ever heard of the children of Fatima. Uh, that's a thing that happened back in the 20s um, in um, England or France. Uh, they were, these three children, they were talking supposedly to the Virgin Mary. But in that area, there was a high concentrate of, um, uh, of corks and granite. And at that uh, a year before, they had a strong earthquake there, and there were earth small tremors the last four years after that. And um, they've been documented. Uh, there's a lot of little uh, blue orbs of light seen. Uh, one of the explanations of the Fatima, they were uh, in a, a rapture of a magnetic field that they were supposedly receiving information from the Virgin Mary. But it was induced by a magnetic field, the, the, the rapture. Uh, when you're induced by the magnetic field, we have a little gland that's in the back of our head that will, um, we, we can feel magnetic fields with it. And if that field is intense enough or could be offset, we experience a religious effect or a spiritual effect from it. So that's an intense field. This is uh, about a thousand times less than that. So it gives us an option to be in residence uh, with our surroundings. Uh, uh, if we are mad, it will make us mad. Uh, if we are in peace, it will be, uh, keeps us in peace. If we are in kindness, we're in kindness. Uh, it will uh, keep our mind clearer if we're in this residence. And um, it works as a, um, uh, if we've had um, gatherings in this uh, thing, and I can't explain it. As, it's awesome uh, to be in the, this tea. If anybody's been in that gathering, please tell them what the feeling's like because there's no other feeling that it could ever be. And it's measurable. <laughs> it's not, mm -hmm. a, not a pseudo thing. It's, it's actually measurable. I can take a meter and look on the magnetic scale and I can tell you what that resonance is and how we're feeling and how people are absorbing it. So that's part of what this is supposed to do. Um, um, right now, it's just that we, we're... we're um, uh, still looking to purchase the property around it. So we're having some issues on that. So, mm -hmm. but uh, it is uh, still ongoing. So that research is still uh, being researched. There's a, a number of these have been proposed around the world. Uh, there's uh, some places in Canada, in the United States that people want to put these up. Um, so, and uh, this technology is from the Copper Scrolls. Uh, this, this is not my technology. This is, I just uh, copied the technology from the blueprints from the copper scrolls. Uh, at one time, there used to be thousands of these around the earth. Um, most of the technology uh, that it used to do with the people said the pyramids the same way. Uh, the pyramids have been turned off for the last uh, 6,000 years, so mm -hmm. they have not been working. Um, I've been there uh, several years ago and trying to measure a peel from that. I couldn't measure anything. Some people say, I'm, I'm not saying that people haven't, but I say that I could not receive any 
any signals or, or any electrical signals from there. So, and like I said, I'm not saying people have it, but like I said, I have not. Right. And what is this that we're seeing on the right-hand side? Uh, this is the resonance of a, an orb. Uh, this is a light source um, uh, reflecting the, the magnetic charge off the crystal itself and, and the crystal. And the light in the middle is uh, the light, uh, when it's in resonance, that light will appear. So, visibly. <laughs> wow. <laughs> this, was, this has been taken with a very um, uh, fast camera, but, uh, camera. To, get that light, that light actually exists. <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> I'm so glad that I was able to get that explanation from you because it's, uh, it's, it's such a beautiful picture. So um, that's really incredible. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I, you know, I was just thinking, I don't think that I told everybody yet. Um, I'm sure they know, but just to make sure they know. So you were in The Cosmic Secret, the documentary that just came out. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And can you tell a little bit about your experience with that and the information that you um, that you personally wanted to get out through the film? Um, you know, they, they talk about um, a lot of different things in there. Some of I agree with, some I don't agree with. Of course, I'm a scientist, so I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to be that way. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's many truths out there. Uh, some of them factual, some uh, not. Um, um, I have nothing to prove, I guess, um, but uh, the Copper Scrolls tells us that we are uh, in a a change uh, in this. And you hear that a lot, you know, people say, oh, there's a change in spirituality. Uh, but uh, if you look at the uh, the galaxy and the universe and the sun and all our, our stuff out there, yeah, there's something going on out there. Um, some people explain it for different things. You know, we, we talk about global warming and, and you say, well, you know, well, men have expected global warming and it's going up. Uh, you can write that statistics a lot of different ways. It depends who the scientist is, you know. Uh, you look over the past 20,000 years um, that we've been warming up and cooling off, warming up and cooling off. We've had an ice age. Uh, we're going into another ice age eventually. Um, but the, the Earth is changing. Guess what? We're in the universe. It's always going to change, mm -hmm. and uh, maybe for the good or for the bad. But um, we measure our standards with our way of living. That means that I want to be warm. I want to have a house with gas, so or electricity, so I'm warm. I want to be able to eat. I want to be able to drive my car. I want to be able to use my cell phone. I want to be able to do all the different things. But remember, we have invented that technology for our comfort. And when our comfort's out of, out of whack, we're going to blame something. Is it global warming? Could be. Or is it just that our standards are very high now that we, we want to be able to get information right off and, and not, um, not look for the information. You know, we can text somebody across the world and within three or four seconds now. Have our world changed? Uh, we still have wars. We still have all the different things out there. So our technology hasn't caught up to our spirituality. And I think that people don't realize what that is. You know, people talk about, um, they say they communicate with the dead. This is a hard subject uh, because um, as humans that we have been brought up with different spiritualities, uh, Christianity is involved, uh, all the different things. And the Bible talks about ghosts and spirits and things like that. I think that a lot of the research people that do this kind of work, it's, it's, yeah, you can do it, but it has to be informational. Um, think, uh, do you have any children? I don't, no. You don't. Uh, do, you have, do you have a loved one? That you, I, I, do, I have a four-legged kid. He's a dog. Okay. So. <laughs> uh, usually if you pass away, you want to uh, send back information to help that person. If, if, I, if I pass away, uh, I want to be able to send my wife information, how it's like over there and things like that. Sure. Um, all, through all the research I've done in the last 50 years and ghost and information, I haven't really received any of that information that actually meant anything, information that wasn't transferred. Uh, a lot of crazy stuff out there, but a lot of stuff that, um, that we need information, you know. Um, is there a God? Um, 
I don't know. I, I, as a scientist, I can't tell you because, you know, I, I look at my meters and all the different things and, and, and I don't have a God meter, you know, there's, oh, there's a God. Great. Good. <laughs> um, I can prove more that we have a programmer or a creator than a God. Um, because that's scary. You know, then it's like, oh, wait, how, how do you prove that? Um, well, uh, with numbers. I can do that with numbers. I, I, I'm a mathematician, so I can prove on the, of the, what they call a split light theory. And I don't know if you've heard that. If, you, if you, people don't know what that is, look it up online that tells you what that is. Um, or I, I can uh, take a laser and, and send a laser a mile away and measure uh, what the loss of the laser from one mile to whatever that is and gather up the information. And where does that energy go? Uh, most energy goes out uh, with um, heat or light, the same, almost the same thing. But, um, um, but I can't tell you what the bend in the laser is. It's like um, you shoot a laser across that far, it's bending. Uh, there's a percentage of uh, uh, 1%, 1% of percent that's bending. Why is it bending? You know? Mm. Well, the, the, well, as a scientist, gravity. Gravity's taking that light and bending that a, a percentage. So what is gravity? Uh, gravity is part of inertia. Inertia is that uh, something is speeding up and slowing down, speeding up and slowing down, and it's bringing you with it. Well, the, everything that's in your body, you, you, spirit, including your spiritual self, is affected by gravity. And when that is, it's like, oh, okay, uh, you, you are bending. Yeah, you are bending. So as a scientist, that if I'm bending, that means something else is happening. Uh, that means part of that bend is time. Because to get where you are right now, if I walk, it would take me about a little, little bit more than nine months to get there. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of bending going on in between time there, this, but it's measurable. But if I take an aircraft through there, I'd be there in uh, four hours, four and a half hours, depending on flight delays and if, uh, through, if, uh, through security. <laughs> so, <Yeah. laughs> so, so and, but it's still measurable. It's, still, it's, it's, it's less time, but it's still measurable. Um, if I was in a fighter plane, I'd be there in 30 minutes, but it's, but I can't be there one second. I can't, I can't be there in one second. Uh, so it's not, I, it's not, I'm not, my technology doesn't tell me I can't get there in one second, but it's not impossible. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. By walking, but, but if I said I walked there 200 years ago, I said, you can't get there any sooner. Yes, I can. I can get there four and a half. Four and a half hours by a, a regular plane. Mm -hmm. uh, fighter jet, 30 minutes. Now, can I get there in a second? Yes, but I don't have that technology. Do you understand that? Yes, absolutely. So by explaining that light bending, uh, that means if I can prove, we, we, we have already proved it. Einstein's proved it. Uh, all the different scientists, they know this math. It's like, that means I can be where you are within a tenth of a second. Mm. I knew that technology. As, and it's not pseudo, it's it's just no. we, we haven't got to that technology. Sure. The Copper Scrolls explains as time, as that bending, as um, uh, wavelengths in between, uh, that uh, your, yourself in time is still. That means uh, right now, uh, one billionth of a billionth of a second that you're still. Two billionth a second that you move. You're moving through time that way. And there's barriers in between that time. There's light barriers, dark spots, wavelengths in between that time. So as we are talking here, that wavelength goes by in seconds and hours and things like that. Right. But it's really, um, time is beside itself. So if I wanted to visit you, uh, that um, if I knew how to slip that time, I could be uh, uh, behind you while I'm talking. Right. You share the same uh, time space. And part of that, um, it's not a theory, uh, part of that space is uh, sharing each other. That um, in, the, in the copper scroll is said that we came from the stars. And we keep on thinking we came in starships, uh, warp time. You know, that's part of a science, of course. And this uh, warp peel technology is it's a proven technology, but we don't have the, all the, the methods to do that right now. But it says in the Copper Scrolls that we travel from stars to stars to stars in a matter of seconds. 
And what I explained to you is part of that technology where I learned that technology from, is that um, if you make something heavy enough that will warp the fabric of time, and if you can control that, you can go anywhere that you, your heart can ever imagine, from the stars to way beyond. Our system that we are looking at now, the star systems, are, are one billionth of a billionth of a billionth of our imagination. So if we think of all the stars that's out there that we think of, of galaxies and everything, trillions and trillions upon trillions, that's not even part of our imagination. That's just very limited of, of what we are. And we, we, we keep on thinking of um, uh, uh, space aliens. I mean, we could get more creative than, than some of the stuff that I hear. <laughs> like, um, partially, it may be true, uh, but it's like, yeah, but the but our imaginations and who we really are, you know, uh, our bodies that we, we see right now is just a, a part of our, um, imagination is what we think. Uh, the part, the, our real existence is, is the blue star or the blue light inside of us that's smaller than small. Our existence in this time is part of that um, light that we don't really see. It's the blue light that's smaller than stuff that makes our existence of our body worthwhile. You know, uh, we keep on thinking, this is me, this is my body. Right. Uh, yes, to a certain point, but uh, but it, it, we are a symbiont, the, the symbiont of time. This was created so we can express emotions and, and, and all the things that you realize if we really look at ourselves, I tell people, you really want to see yourself, look up. Go up and look up at night and you will see yourself. People don't understand that. People uh, theorize well, what I said. But in the Carpenter Scrolls, if you look up, if you look up, you will actually see yourself. But people don't really understand that. <laughs> so <Auto> this, <laughs> this time technology, um, just to touch on that really quick. Um, so, at, which, thank you so much for that explanation. I, I know a lot just clicked for me. Um, I, I would assume it's clicking for the audience as well. That was a really great um, just breakdown of the concepts and the theories. So. You, you know, you say that we can be somewhere in a billionth of a second. Um, we just don't have that technology. So that, that technology, do you personally believe that is an external technology or do you believe it's an internal technology? Can you explain internal, external? Sure. So do you think that this is, um, that this type of technology, is this something that beings possibly come inherent with? that we we know how to with our body computers as peter slattery put peter slattery puts it um as our body computers that we know how to bend time that way um but we just don't understand that we know it yet or do you feel that even in the star systems or the civilizations that are advanced enough to have that technology do you believe it's an external technology that they and we could use you didn't understand the question i'll ask the question again i'm sorry please go ahead do you think this is external or internal? Do I think what is? There you go. So <laughs> understanding how to ask the question is, is part of the understanding of the universe. Mm -hmm. External, internal, there's no difference. You understand that? Okay. If we are of this light and this gravity, there's, there's neither. And if there's neither, what is then? You understand that? You're bending my reality a little bit, but I think that's a good thing. <laughs> well, um, we, we, as human beings, we talk like human beings. We talk our hearts inside of us, but we talk about the heart as I feel it in my heart. Uh, but there's two different things you're talking about. Uh, internal uh, is our, really our external. Um, our bodies is only that one that makes it different. Uh, our reality and our thought of mind is the internal, external of our creation. Do you understand that? Okay. So is the world in back of me really turning? Or do, is that on a screen? Or is that I'm on a ship somewhere looking down at your earth? Hmm. Internal, external. So part of understanding the whole truth of of understanding where we are in the world is that we ask the right question and we get the universe's answer. Mm. 
What's on this blue earth is the external. What I'm talking about is external. Mm -hmm. So does a hamster realize is, is in a hamster cage or in an enclosed? Why do we call it a hamster cage? Why do we, and again, is that um, we, we are speaking a language, but sometimes that language is so hard to understand because what our reality it really is. You know? mm -hmm. I think m myself as um, going out into the public and speaking, I think this is the hardest that it is for me to explain your English to where I come from. Mm -hmm. uh, because um, we have not faceted all the words out there that really mean something. And when you facet something, you're making it part of something part of reality, part of, part of the, the truth of what we are really looking at. Right. Thank you. I got to get, I gotta get <laughs> literally when I say bending reality, like there's, there's a little, there's some expansion going on in, in my internal <laughs> for sure. Um, so you had said that, um, or, or you speak on the fact that, that, 2012 is when you started bringing these teachings or these teachings were approved to step out of the native world and come into the non-native world. So um, is there, you know, what is the purpose or the mission in releasing this information now versus, you know, the way it was kind of kept, kept sacred for, you know, with just, um, just the natives, just the native people for, for thousands of years. Um. Well, I guess this stemmed back about 300 years ago. Um, uh, the world was changing then. If you went out into the communities and talked to them, oh, the world is changing and changing this and steam engines and all the different things out there that's happening. And, but several of your people realized that our change was going in a different direction. And when you experience change and you're part of uh, a spiritual group, what do you do? You pray. Who do you pray to? God? Something? Maybe it's a, it's a request to the universe that we need change. Um, is it immediate? What does change look like 300 years ago? Um, you, uh, 300 years ago, the expansion of the United States is going on. Uh, thousands and thousands of natives were being exterminated from this earth because they didn't want them here and uh, slavery. I mean, all the different things, in the world, that's quite a change going on. Mm -hmm. um, did the Christians pray? I don't know, uh, but somebody did. And that prayer was released into the universe somehow into that time that I was telling you, it was instantaneous. But change is never instantaneous because humans can't accept change as it is. If I told you right now, the creator was walking among you, uh, you would want to know who that creator was. Was a man or a woman or what, or a dog or a cat or something like that? Would we believe it? Most likely not. Um, because uh, the message says like, oh, that's, that's craziness, you know? Uh, has he got long beard and white robe? Uh, does he talk about the multiples, you know? But 300 some odd years ago, that's what you guys asked for. Some of you guys knew how to ask the question. And the change was put out there. What does that change look like again? Was it God, creator? I don't know. But it was answered. It was answered. So, but how do you discern that answer? And, that, and again, it's like, this is kind of what, uh, I didn't really want to come here myself uh, to, to be the one that explains this, but that's kind of what I was prepared for. Think about it. Now, why would any elders go to one child and, and, and speak teachings to that one child unless they know that he's going to do something? Am I the creator? No, I'm just a man. Um, but I do have a message if people are willing to listen. Why did they send me? They, they sent the one that was prepared. Uh, I came kicking and screaming uh, because when I came here, and then my, my apologies again for the people that don't understand my words, 
I came in a white world, white privilege of people that have no ideas what, where, who I am or who, where I came from or what my teachings are. Was I met with open arms? No, there was a few people that welcomed me, but it was more help from the spirits to get me here. And it still is. This is an ongoing battle every day. Um, uh, I'm, I'm still not accepted in some of these teachings uh, through my culture and other cultures. Um, some people call me uh, self prophecy, uh, all the different things, but I'm, I'm, I'm asked, my elders ask me to do something, and I'm doing what my elders ask me to do. I'm sharing these teachings the way that I was taught. So when I came here um, 10 years ago to do this, um, everybody was expecting uh, feathers and drums and leather and me singing native songs and, and that long hair and I, I talking a dialect. I'm, I'm not kidding. Yeah, there's people that actually came up to me and says, where's your long hair, you know? Um, you know, wow. where's your feather, where's your drum? And, and they're still doing this to this very day, this very day. We're not educated enough, I mean, we want to be able to understand what peace means and, and, and kindness and compassion. And we don't give it to ourselves. We don't give it to our neighbors. Uh, you still have homeless people. I was invited to this, uh, a couple of years ago to speak it to the part of the world religion. You think that would be the greatest thing for me to be at? My own people, the native people being there. I had a hard time just speaking to the native people, let alone to the Christians and Jewish people, they wouldn't hear me, you know? I'm walking in the hall and looking outside of this place with all these spiritual leaders and Christian legion, and there's, there's, there's a lot of them walking around and things like that. The priests wouldn't even talk to me. I had to kind of wrestle them to the ground to talk to them. And I look outside that window and guess what I seen outside? Homeless people and all the people in the collars walking by. I, I got as soon as possible, I went outside and I tried to give as much money away as I, I could, and you know, but nobody's seen that. I didn't ask anybody seen it, but then people were asking for help. What are we doing? We're, we're asking for help. What does that look like? Uh, maybe we can sing, sit around, um, hand in hand, sing Kumbaya, but in, That'd be great. We can sing all these spiritual songs, but it still doesn't feed the homeless. It still doesn't help that um, mother that's feeding his child or that person looking for a job. You know, it's, it's still, you know, I'm not trying to be Miss, Mr. Goody. Honestly. I'm just trying to help. That's all I'm doing. And uh, people have a misconception of that. Uh, I go to a uh, place to speak and only five people show up, you know. There's five people now knowing, you know, it was like, right. what, what do you do? You, you know, I tell people, people say, oh, yeah, I know ESP. So great. Get a thousand people that know ESP and come to my speak. You know, you want to know part of, of the truth, you know, and people want to give me messages. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. But my elders gave me a message what to do. I have, my mind is clear. I know what I'm doing. I, I you know, Mm -hmm. And I'm going to keep doing it. So. And how can our audience um, find your teachings or find you? Do you do anything? I know that, that you go like you'll be in London, um, I believe this month, correct? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. You leave tomorrow. Oh, well, thank you so much for taking your time today <laughs> to speak with me. Um, so what for our audience right now, if they want to jump off of this interview and they want to look you up, if they want to find the teachings or find a way to learn the teachings from you, what are their, what are their avenues that they can? I, I know this is the hardest thing some people are going to do and come and find me, honestly. Come and find out where I'm talking uh, because we are running literally out of time in these teachings. Uh, it's, I'm not going to be here forever. Um, they, they're going to come and get me and, um, and uh, there's not gonna be a, there's not a teacher. There used to be thousands of us at one time, just like the buffalo. There's just one now. Come and find me. Uh, come and find out what the teachings are. You know, and, and people don't understand that how important this is. This is important to the whole world. I'm not asking for very much. Um, maybe a cheeseburger. <laughs> so, but, <laughs> 
but I'm not asking for very much. So it's like, come and find where we are. Come find what's going on. Uh, we have uh, websites and stuff like that, messages. But it's very important that, that I do meet these people, you know? There's, there's thousands of people I need to meet, but, you know, it's, uh, five at a time is going to take me a while. <laughs> right. Right. All right, David. Well, thank you so much. I will be sure to get all of your websites and so forth from you guys and your Facebook pages so that I can post it um, on the interview so people can people can start following you in some ways to see where you are speaking and in different places. And hopefully they will be able to to get to those places with you. I'm on. Thank you. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, was there was there anything else you wanted to share, David, or one last word of advice or message to humanity or you know anything well, like that people ask what they can do i tell people to do three acts of kindness every day in their in their spiritual um practice go 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 through three acts of kindness every day go to your way to do them and don't tell anybody because uh, I, I, I say this a lot, and uh, some people went on, on the, uh, did a couple of websites. Uh, Look, what I do for kindness, I'm helping this person. Don't do that. Uh, do it to help a person. Don't do it for views or anything like that. Uh, go and actually help uh, the humans, you know. If you see somebody on the street, don't judge them. You know, and I'm sure there's people that uh, take advantage of that. Give a dollar away, you know. You can give it a dollar away. Um, go, go find a, talk to your mom, go talk to your dad, uh, talk to your children, um, uh, write a letter to somebody you haven't wrote to in a long time, uh, text somebody that you haven't text, uh, uh, Facebook, um, sometimes I don't like Facebook because they define friends to be friends and unfriends. Right. I have friends, you know, it's so easy to unfriend somebody. Uh, have friends, real friends. I wish all the friends on my uh, friends on, that I can, that can come here and speak. You know, I have over 600 people on there. Come and come and hear me, man. My words are not the greatest words in the world. Like I'm not the best speaker, you know. But I do have a message. So come and find me. You know, I want to know who you are. I'm not kidding. I want to know who you are. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Maine is now on my list. <laughs> Okay, so three acts of kindness anonymously. That yeah. is the challenge. No hashtag, no pictures, no yeah. nothing. Just three acts of anonymous kindness. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love people, that. I tell people get up in the mirror, get up in the morning, look in the mirror, and say you like that person. Because that person is always the opposite of you. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome, David. Thank you. Thank you so much. I, I truly appreciate your time and your message and your mission. Um, every time, anytime I see somebody living their own authentic mission, um, I think it puts out such a resonance into the world that it does, you know, even if you never left your house again, yeah, I still think you're doing good where, you know, just where you are, just authentically being you. So um, I want to thank you for that. Um, yeah. And please thank Jacqueline for us too, your wife. I know she's a big part of your, your team and <laughs> she does a lot of the work behind the scenes. So, um, okay guys, well, thank you everybody so much for joining us. Um, I will have all of the, um, David has a few websites as well as Facebook pages. So I will make sure to put all of the links in this post as soon as we wrap everything up here. Um, and remember three X of anonymous kindness. That is, that is the challenge. So thank you, David, so much. I really appreciate your time. Yeah. Absolutely. All right, guys. Thank you so much. We will see you tomorrow. I will have um, John D'Souza, the X-Man, uh, on tomorrow at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. We'll get some more information out about that here later today as well, guys. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you.